music from outer space. Synth DIY. Hi, this is Ray Wilson of Music from Outer Space, and I'd like to just talk to you for a few minutes about the MFOS Sound Lab Mini Synth Mark II, which is the latest uh, single board synthesizer that I've designed and that I will be uh, selling a circuit board and a front panel for. Um, I'd like to just go over the module complement and then a little bit of the details of the modules. There are two VCOs. There are two Attack Decay envelope generators. There is a sample and hold. There's a low frequency oscillator. There is a uh, state variable, voltage controlled state variable filter. And there is a VCA. Uh, if I didn't mention it, there's also, of course, the mixer. Now, let's go over each of the uh, VCOs. Uh, there's a coarse and a fine frequency control. There's normalized switching arrangement. When you're in LFO position, then the amount of the output level uh, from the LFO is what is modulating this VCO. And it is modulating the, uh, the exponential input, so you really get some wide-ranging modulation there. Uh, in the sample and hold position, then the output of the sample and hold is routed over here. You don't uh, need a patch cord for it. And uh, again, it's routed to an exponential uh, control voltage input. The keyboard control voltage is normalized so that when you have the output of your MIDI to CV or your keyboard voltage put in here, then when you have uh, this in this position, it's applied to this VCO. And again, you don't need a patch cord for that. Uh, lastly, you can punch this over to the uh, Attack Decay Generator 1 and then use its output level to determine how much VCO1 is modulated by that. There's a pulse width control that can take you from about 10% up to 90% uh, pulse width on your rectangular wave. You can choose between rectangular wave and sawtooth wave. There's a pulse width modulation input so that you can use the LFO output to uh, modulate the pulse width of either of the oscillators. Uh, on oscillator 1, there's a sync switch that is normalized to the output of VCO2. So when you have this in the sync position, uh, this is being synced to VCO2. Now, you can see there's a linear CV input on VCO2, and there's the same thing on VCO1. I have simply replaced mine with a pot that takes the uh, output from VCO2, actually from the center pole of this switch, over to the pot and then to the linear CV modulation input of VCO1. And so I have a, a variable amount of uh, linear modulation I can apply to VCO1 from VCO2. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do that mod on the site. If you'd like to, you can do it. Um, now, we also have of course, the con keyboard control inputs, your 1 volt per octave CV input and your gate input. As I mentioned previously, this is normalized, uh, routed to both of the VCOs. It's also routed up here to the uh, state variable filter, the voltage controlled filter. Um, the gate is routed over to the AD envelope generators and when you have this in the keyboard gate position, then uh, you're getting keyboard gates for this particular AD envelope generator, or this one, depending on how you have them set. Uh, the mixer takes the output of the VCOs, uh, the white noise generator that's in the unit, and uh, mixes those together. We also have an external input, and there's a, a good bit of gain there, so that uh, you're able to put a guitar in there, or a, an external keyboard, and, uh, and control the level with this gain control. The noise out is the full level noise that's from the noise generator. It's not attenuated by this pot. Now each of the attack decay envelope generators has attack time, decay time, output level, and its own uh, repeat gate generator. Uh, the switching here is normalized so that you can have this being uh, gated by the internal repeat gate. You can have it uh, gated by, or actually triggered by the sample and hold, or you can turn it on to the keyboard gate. Now, any time a gate is input and held, um, the other gates will be non-functional until that one is released, just to, so you know that. You also have a long range and a short range for your attack and decay times. You have a gate mode and a triggered mode. 
in gated mode, when you apply a gate, uh, the output of the AD envelope generator will rise <clears throat> uh, to its uh, maximum output, which is about plus 5 volts, if the gate is held. Uh, otherwise, it will rise according to the attack time, and if you then let go of the gate, it will uh, decay uh, along with the decay time, kind of in an attack release mode uh, when you have it like that. In triggered mode, the output of the AD generator will go to maximum level and then decay back to minimum level. Again, maximum level is about plus 5 volts, minimum level is about minus 5 volts. Um, you also have the ADEG out, which you can then use to either modulate pulse width or take it over here to the input of the sample and hold. Uh, you have some options there uh, as far as modulation. There's a manual gate button for the AD envelope generator so that you can uh, just, you know, make sound effects, hold that down, and it's like applying a gate, only it's just with the push button. All right, AD envelope generator 2. Same complement of features. On the voltage controlled, uh, controlled state variable filter, we have uh, coarse cutoff frequency, fine cutoff frequency, resonance, uh, LFO modulation, and AD1 modulation. Uh, again, normalized over to here so you don't have to patch over to that. You can choose between bandpass output or low pass output. You can choose to have the keyboard control voltage from this jack applied to uh, the exponential input of the synthesizer's uh, v VCF here, if you like. And then there's also an, ex uh, an extra CV in jack, uh, banana jack, that you can use to modulate the filter from the sample and hold, or uh, other, uh, you can also put this in here if you want twice as much modulation, uh, you can do that. Okay, also when you turn the resonance of the filter all the way up, you will get oscillation, a really nice sine wave oscill oscillation when you're in low pass mode. Uh, when you're in band pass mode, you're going to get a little flattening of the sine wave on the bottom of the wave, but uh, that's just the way that is. Uh, I also suggest when you're using bandpass mode, you might want to lower your level so that you don't get any distortion out of the filter, unless you want distortion, in which case you can overdrive it if you like. You can also overdrive it in uh, low pass mode by really cranking up the uh, oscillator volumes. Uh, when you want to apply the, the LFO to the filter, you just use this knob. The full level LFO is applied to this knob and then you're able to uh, change the, the level that you want to modulate the filter with. Same thing with the AD1 modulation. It is the full uh, voltage output of this AD generator and uh, you can then control how much you modulate the filter with that, with that knob. Uh, moving over to the VCA, um, what we have here is our two normalized modulation inputs. And I like this arrangement. Uh, as you turn this more and more uh, clockwise, what happens is that the output of this uh, becomes, uh, it modulates the VCA more deeply. As you bring it this way, the VCA is turned on. So the VCA is just turned on when you're at zero modulation on the AD2 uh, modulation control. As you advance it, you get more and more modulation from AD2. Um, uh, now this modulation control allows you to choose between VCO1 or LFO to apply additional modulation to the VCA. And you can get some neat bell effects with the VCO1, uh, also with LFO, because in high range, uh, the LFO goes to about uh, 3 to 500 hertz. Um, the sample and hold, you have input level, and that's so that you can put whatever type of signal in there you want, within reason, of course, uh, uh, synth level signals, and control how much of it is fed into the sample and hold. And uh, then there's some gain applied so that you can really get some wide-ranging modulation with this sample and hold. I like it a lot. Um, moving on to the low frequency oscillator, we see we have the frequency adjust control, the output level, as I've explained, which is used over in the modulation for the VCOs, um, and also that is uh, connected to this output. Um, if I didn't mention it before, also in the ADEG out, that is also uh, attenuated by the pot for each of the output levels there. Back to the LFO. 
Um, you have, the, of course, the LED to tell you the rate. You have a high range and you have low range, which just widens the range of uh, modulation options from the LFO. You have several waveforms. You can go with a square wave oscillation. You can go with a um, sawtooth, with a triangle, or a ramp wave. And um, again, provides a lot of modulation options. Master volume for your output and the main output jack. Uh, this is uh, directly attenuating the main output. So that is essentially what you're getting when you build a SoundLab MiniSynth Mark II synthesizer. It's a nice synthesizer. I don't know if you got a chance to listen to the samples, but uh, it's, it's really well-tempered to <laughs> steal a little line there from, uh, from Bach. And um, I think you're really going to enjoy it. I'm, I'm having a blast with this thing. I built it into my keyboard controller, <clears throat> and um, it's just a nice little synthesizer. So I hope you get a chance to check out the website. Um, I'll be offering this panel which is, uh, you know, it's a real nice panel. It's, it's made from a nice uh, aluminum that's uh, it's got a little rigidity to it. It's all silk screened. It's all drilled. It's ready to go. I'll also be offering uh, a circuit board, of course, that is, uh, you know, as nice as you can get as far as a circuit board is concerned. So I hope you do get a chance to build this. I really think you're going to be satisfied. And um, that's basically it. I will talk to you again later. This is Ray Wilson of Music from Outer Space, and thanks again for listening. Music from Outer Space. Synth DIY.